There have been battles that changed history as we know it, and then there are battles like the Battle of Talas that changed the future. Let us learn all about the empires that started it, the stories behind the victories, betrayal and defeat, and the treasures they have left behind for all of mankind. In the year 618 AD, the Tang Dynasty came into power in China. It was headed by Emperor Gaozu, who led the imperial dynasty into high points of Chinese civilization. Under his leadership, the Tang Dynasty began expanding towards the west and as a result, the Chinese cities became an international hub of culture where art, academics, religious centers and cultural exchange flourished. No wonder the Tang Dynasty is considered as the golden age of cosmopolitan culture. In the winter of 629 AD, the Tang Empire under General Li Jing led a campaign against the Eastern Turkic Khaganate for threatening the Tangs and captured the Turks' leader Ilig Kagan by 630 AD, which destroyed the Eastern Turkic Khaganate and established the Anbei Protectorate, a Chinese military government in the Eastern Territory. In the year 657 AD, the Western Turkic Khaganate was also conquered by the Tang Dynasty's generals after they led a military campaign and captured Ashina Helu, ruler of the Western Turkic Khaganate. This resulted in the Tang Dynasty achieving rule over all the regions controlled by the Western Turkic Khaganate. By the year 715 AD, the Tang Dynasty had established itself as the biggest Chinese state in Central Asia and rivaled the legacy of the Great Han Dynasty. So, in the Islamic world, the Umayyad Caliphate ruled from 661 AD to 680 AD under the leadership of Marwan I, who defeated both the Eastern Roman Empire and the Sassanid Empires. He managed to establish a vast empire and took control over the majority of the territories from Spain to Central Asia, also from Arabia to the Caucasus. After several local armed conflicts against the Turks of Central Asia, the Umayyad Caliphate won control of most of Transoxiana and that meant the Great Tang Empire and the incredible Umayyad Empire shared control over the territory of Silk Road, a trade route which linked China to the west. By the year 715, conflicts between the Umayyad Caliphate and the Chinese Empire had started. The first battle is believed to be in the Fagana Valley in Central Asia, and despite the assistance of the Tibetan army, Muslims failed to win the conflict. As the Umayyads planned their expansion routes, the Chinese government plotted yet another conflict to weaken the Muslim world. Two years after the war in Fergana Valley, the Tang Empire sent an army of Karluk mercenaries against the Arabs and the Tibetans. Karluk tribe are a nomadic Turkish population living in the Great Steppes and they were considered the best mercenaries in the Tang Empire. Along with the Tang Empire's conflicts, the Umayyad Caliphate also faced several revolts. Many of them failed, however a revolt led by Abu al-Abbas al-Safah in the year 750 AD against the Umayyad Caliph Marwan II led to the defeat of the great Umayyad Caliphate after the last Umayyad Caliph was overthrown. Abu al-Abbas al-Safah became the first Caliph of the Abbasid Empire and was proclaimed in the Great Mosque of Kufa. He ruled from the city of Baghdad, which under his power became the center of trade and culture all around the world. Unknown to al Safa, the Chinese had started subduing most of Central Asia by using the constant strifes of the Muslim world against them. An example of the Chinese government's plotting would be a military campaign started in the city-state of Gilgit by Commander Gao. At the time, the city of Gilgit was allied to the Tibetan Empire, which was in turn also the ally of the Abbasid Caliphate. Commander Gao of the Chinese army won victory over Gilgit and became the governor of the region. Under his leadership, many petty kingdoms were forced to become town vassals, meaning they became subordinates of his command. 
His rule also dissolved feuds between the state of Fergana and the state of Tashkent by capturing the Abbasid-controlled state of Tashkent in the spring of 750 AD. The princes of Tashkent were defeated. The Abbasid general Ziad ibn Salih escaped to Samarkand and appointed troops to march eastwards in an attempt to dissolve the Tang army. On the other side, the Tang general Gao was slowly recruiting the Karluk Turks in Fergana to create an army. By the year 751, the two armies finally met alongside the modern-day border of Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. According to Chinese sources, there were around 200,000 troops of the Abbasid Caliphate, while the Chinese army had only 30,000 town warriors. However, the earliest accounts of the battle from the Arab sources mentioned there were an estimate of 100,000 troops from both sides, which included the Karluk mercenaries in the Chinese army. A certain estimate is not known, but historians believe that since both of the armies were ill-prepared for battle and thousands of kilometers away from their respective centers of rule stranded at the edge of the Talas River, it is safe to assume both armies had around 30 to 50,000 troops. The Abbasid general Ziad ibn Salih had appointed troops from Arabia as well as allies from the Tibetan Empire and the Turkish Khaganate, while the Tang general Gao appointed troops mostly from China and also included some allied troops from Fergana and the Karluk Turks. In the second half of 751 AD, the Battle of Talas began on the banks of the River Talas between the Muslim forces of Abbasid dynasty and the Chinese army of the Tang dynasty. The first three days of battle were fought nearly identically with frontline archers from the Chinese army gaining power over the Muslim forces and dealing a lot of heavy damage to their missile units. Despite the Abbasid's army redirecting the positions of their spearmen to the front, the Muslim forces still failed to gain power over their counterparts as General Gao's army of spearmen had relatively better armor and could sustain heavier injuries. The Abbasid general Ziad ibn Salih pointed his heavy cavalry to attack the lighter forces on the Chinese side, which may not have alleviated any pressure on his frontline troops, but Ziad's decision to attack Gao's lighter column meant General Gao had to appoint several troops from his reserves to attack the Muslim forces, which weakened the Chinese strength. Here is the interesting part of the battle. On the fourth day of the war, the Karluk Turks, which were initially gathered to aid the Tang army, betrayed the Chinese and attacked their infantry from the flanks. The sudden shock of the Karluk's attack on the Chinese allowed the Muslim forces to attack their enemies from the front, and they charged against them until General Gao Jianzi was forced to accept defeat. The Tang army lost around 30,000 of its troops, while the Abbasids had an estimate of 10 to 20,000 casualties. General Gao managed to escape and took with him at least 2,000 of his Tang troops from the estimated 10,000 that were left. In order to control the expansion of the Muslim Arabs, the Tang Chinese regularly sent armies to the banks of the river Talas, which had to retreat back to their centers in Central Asia after a heavy rebellion caused a ruckus in 755 AD. Somehow, the Abbasid Caliphate was still kept contained due to which they failed to establish themselves in the lands, and as a result, the Turkic influence rose. However, the results of the Battle of Talas do not end here. The defeat of the Tang Chinese led to the end of the Tang Empire's westward expansion and the region saw a decline in the influence of Buddhism. On the other edge of the war, the victory of the Muslim Arabs of the Abbasid Caliphate resulted in them gaining control over Transoxiana for 400 years. Also, because the state was situated on the Silk Road, it proved to be incredibly beneficial for the Muslim Arabs in terms of trade and economics. Up until then, the people of China were guarding the art of papermaking so it would not reach the Muslim or the Western world and benefit them. In the aftermath of the Battle of Talas, 
Several troops from the Tang Chinese army were imprisoned and through them, the paper-making technology spread to the Muslim Arabs as well as the Middle East and Europe. After the battle, the Turks also started adopting Islam, which led to the Crusades, the Seljuk conquests in the Middle East, the fall of Byzantium, and ultimately the rise of the Ottoman Empire. The Battle of Talas is a lesser known battle in the history of the world. However, according to historians, its implications have been and are presently so strong that without the battle, modern-day civilization would have been behind a century's worth of development at least.